Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so as uh, Bud said, I wanted to give a little bit of an update on, um, on where we're at and uh, thank everyone uh, for their prayers for my family. Uh, but before I do that, um, I wanted to give you a little bit of a story. So this morning, I woke up and uh, back here in Florida, and I pulled my to-do list that I've made for uh, the few days that I'm here. And, uh, you know, I've got all the, you know, check the mail, cancel this, pick up this. And Natalie had added an item on the, on the bottom of my to-do list, which was to hug every single person here. And for the sake of time, I figured maybe we could just do that virtually. So consider this your hug from Natalie. <laughs> so to give you a little bit of background, I've been, um, I've been praying for the salvation of my father for basically my entire adult life. And, um, you know, he's 70 years old now. And uh, not really something I ever thought would, would actually happen. And uh, a couple days before we left, he called and told us that um, he was beginning a relationship with Jesus, that he'd been talking to him, uh, he'd been praying, he'd been um, asking for comfort and things like that. And um, as you know, my dad has uh, congestive heart failure and uh, kidney disease as well. And so that was very encouraging. We were really excited about that. And then the night that we packed all of our stuff into a moving van and watched it drive away, um, he called us up to tell us that he had decided uh, he was going to refuse all medical treatment. So um, he, he was in kidney failure, um, and, um, and he was not going to seek medical treatment at all. So we figured the doctors said he had a couple of weeks at that point um, until his kidneys were completely shut down and um, he would just fall asleep. So um, we got there. Lori got there first. Um, Natalie and I drove our cars across the country and uh, Lori and Nicole flew in. And when Lori arrived on the 25th of January, she told me, uh, you better hurry because we are lifting him from a wheelchair into bed, and we are lifting him out of bed back into a wheelchair in the morning. So we knew that time was critical. But every night at dinner, he would say, thank you, Jesus, for another day with my family. Um, I know that you're the one sustaining me, and uh, I'm sorry that it took me so long to recognize that. So we got there. Um, we've got a picture of it right there. So there's dad in his wheelchair. Uh, whole family is around. My sister had flown in from London at that point uh, so that she was there as well. And uh, we had a very good uh, evening that night and continued to go over. And then something completely inexplicable happened. Um, he was slowly kind of getting stronger. So... We weren't having to lift him. We were having to help him stand. Um, and he would be able to, we'd lift him out of the wheelchair. He could turn 90 degrees and then sit back down into the bed. And um, at that point, so when he was released, actually this is a good graphic here. When he was released, his kidney GFR score was 14, which as you can see is in, in the kidney failure zone right there. Um, so he was able to stand, turn, and sit. And then um, another week went by, and he was able to walk with a walker. And all of this isn't supposed to happen. He's not supposed to be improving. He's supposed to fall asleep. Um, but things continued to progress. Um, last week, he had a blood test uh, to figure out what was going on with the kidneys, which Normally, they don't do. Once they send you home and, um, and you're on hospice care, you, you don't even talk to the doctor again. Um, that's it. So we've made all the arrangements, and, and that's the end of it. So, uh, but he was getting so much better, they said, I think we need to see what's going on here. So they did another blood test, 
And um, last week, his uh, GFR score was 60. He, uh, he's now up walking around. Um, actually, there's another shot there. He is standing uh, with us for a picture that he walked over there for. And um, the doctors can't really explain it. Can you imagine? They, they have no medical explanation uh, for what's happened. It's not really possible. So uh, there's only one thing that's really uh, changed in his life, uh, and that is the power of prayer. Uh, both from him, uh, from you guys here, from us, our family, and my friends all over the place that have been praying for him. Uh, that's the only thing that's different. So thank you for your prayers. They do matter. Um, we will continue to pray. He's obviously not out of the woods. He still has one kidney. Um, you know, the other one's completely shut down. He's got one kidney operating with 40% blood flow. He still has congestive heart failure. Um, but we're certainly hopeful. Certainly hopeful. So thank you.